Hi everyone, it's Professor Pemberton, and in this video we're going to talk about solving exponential equations. So in this section we're going to solve equations that involve exponential and logarithmic functions. The techniques that we're going to develop in this section will be used to solve application problems involving exponential growth and exponential decay in the next section. So in this video we're going to talk about how to use like bases to solve exponential equations and how to use logarithms to solve exponential equations. So exponential equations. Recall in previous sections, we've actually talked about how to solve exponential equations using the following one-to-one -one property of exponential functions. If you have base a raised to the x exponent on one side of the equation, and you also have base a, so the same base on the other side of the equation, also raised to a different exponent y, if the exponential bases are exactly the same and they're equal to one another, then the exponents must be equal to each other as well. And that's because exponential functions are one-to-one -one functions. So if the base is greater than zero and the base is not equal to one, if the bases are equal on both sides, then the exponents must also be equal. So example one, solving exponential equations. Solve each of the following exponential equations. Number one, base five raised to the x subtract one exponent is equal to 125. So notice you have base five on one side of the equation that's being raised to the exponent x minus one, but the other side of the equation isn't base five, it's 125. However, you can rewrite 125 as a power of five or base five to the exponent three. So that way you have the same base on both sides of the equation. So now you have base five raised to the x minus one on the left side of the equation, and 125 can be rewritten as base five cubed. And so since you have base five on each side of the equation isolated, then that means that the exponents must be equal to one another. So x minus one must be equal to three. And if you solve this resulting equation for x, you find out that the solution is x equals four. So if x equals four, it makes the original equation true. You have five to the four minus one exponent, which will be five cubed, and that is true, it's 125. Number two, this time you have base four raised to the exponent two x plus one, and it equals base 16 to the x minus one exponent. Well, let's see if you can rewrite base four and base 16 to be the same base on both sides of the equation, because base four and base 16 are different bases as of right now. Well, the base that's in common with base four and 16, you can use base four or you can use base two. You can rewrite four as base two squared. So two squared will give you four, and that's being raised to the two x plus one power on the base four already. So it's two squared to the two x plus one power. And then 16 can be also rewritten as a base two. It's two to the fourth power, because two to the fourth is 16, and then you also have x minus one as an exponent on the 16. It's two to the fourth also to the x minus one power. And so now, if you remember, if you have exponents nested like this, that means that you multiply the exponents. So that means two times two x plus one, must equal four times x minus one in parentheses. And so if you distribute the two and you distribute the four to remove any parentheses, on the left side of the equation, you'll have four x plus two. On the right side of the equation, you'll have four x minus four. The four x's can be subtracted from one another and they'll cancel out or give you zero x. And what's left over will be two equals negative four. Well, two cannot be equal to negative four. This is a false statement. So that means that there are no solutions to this equation. Four to the two x plus one power, is equal to 16 to the power x minus 1. There are no x values that would ever make this equation true. And number three, you have base e to the exponent 1 subtract 2x on the left side of the equation, and then on the right side of the equation you have base e to the 3x minus 5 exponent. Well, they're already base e on both sides of the equation. You don't need to rewrite either side of the equation. They're already the same base. So that means 1 minus 2x on the left side of the equation must equal the exponent on the right side of the equation, 3x minus 5. And if you isolate x on one side of the equation, you'll have negative five x equals negative six, or x equals six fifths. So that is the solution to the equation, base e to the one minus two x power is equal to base e to the three x minus five power. If x is six fifths, you'll get a true statement. On both sides of the equation will be equal to one another. So in the last example, we had three different problems that you can rewrite both sides of the equation to be the same base. So that you have a common base on both sides of the exponential equation. Well, for most exponential equations, you can't express each side of the equation using the same base. In such cases, we're going to use an algebraic technique that can be used to obtain the exact solutions when solving those type of exponential equations. So the algebraic technique that we're going to use is this, guidelines for solving exponential equations. Number one, determine if both sides of the equation, an exponential equation, can be written using an exponential base in common. This can reduce the amount of algebraic manipulation that may be needed. Number two, in either case, whether you either have the same basis on both sides of the equation or not, you can actually isolate one exponential expression on one side of the equation. And then number three, take the logarithm on each side of the equation, then use the laws of logarithms to bring down the exponent that contains the variable to be solved for. And then four, solve the resulting equation for the unknown variable. So example two, solving exponential equations. Use logarithms to solve each exponential equation. If necessary, round your answers to three decimal places. 
So number one, you have base three raised to the exponent x plus two on the left side of the equation, and on the right side of the equation you have seven. Notice that both sides of the equation cannot be rewritten to have a common base. One side has base three, the other side has base seven. There is no number or common base between three and seven. So we're gonna use an algebraic technique this time. First step is to isolate the exponential expression on one side of the equation. Well, the exponential expression is on the left side of the equation already. You have base three raised to the exponent x plus two. That's your exponential expression that contains the variable. So now we're going to take the logarithm on both sides of the equation. It doesn't matter what type of logarithm you use. But however, since you're going to use a scientific or graphing calculator to evaluate what is the value of x that will make this equation true, you might want to change the log base 10 or log base e. Otherwise, you're going to have to use a change of base formula that we talked about in the previous video. So let's use natural log. If you take natural log on the left side of the equation, you'll have natural log and the argument will be the left side of the equation th base 3 to the x plus 2 power and it equals natural log of the right side. So 7 will be the argument of the natural log on the right side of the equation. And now we can actually bring the exponent that contains the variable down and make it a coefficient using the power law for logarithms. So the x plus 2 can be taken down. So now you'll have x plus 2 times the quantity. Natural log of base 3 is still part of the argument of the logarithm. So you have x plus 2 times natural log of 3 is equal to natural log of 7 on the other side of the equation. And now we want to solve for x for this resulting equation. So how do you get x by itself? Well, let's divide by natural log of three first. That way it will be divided on the other side of the equation. So you have x plus two on the left side of the equation is equal to natural log of seven divided by natural log of three. Now keep in mind, this is not a logarithmic property. The quotient law said natural log of the fraction seven divided by three is a difference of logarithms. This is a quotient of logarithms. There is not a logarithmic property that we can use to simplify this expression. We'll just keep it natural log of seven divided by natural log of three. And if we wanna get x by itself, we wanna subtract two on both sides of the equation. And so x is equal to the exact answer, natural log of seven divided by natural log of three, and then subtract two. Or if you want to find out what is the approximate answer, you'll use a graphing calculator or scientific calculator to find out that natural log of seven, close parenthesis, divided by natural log of three, close parenthesis, and then subtract two is approximately negative 0.2288. Or if you round in three decimal places, it'll be negative 0.229. Okay, number two. You have base four raised to the exponent two x minus one on one side of the equation, and on the other side of the equation you have nine. So again, you cannot rewrite both sides of the equation to be a common base. On one side you have the base four, and on the other side you have base nine, and there's no common base between base four and nine. So we're gonna use the algebraic technique to solve for x, which is in the exponent on base four. So take the natural log on both sides of the equation again. So you have natural log of the left side of the equation, which becomes the argument of the logarithm, base four to the two x minus one power, is equal to natural log of the right side of the equation becomes the argument of the natural log. So it would be natural log of nine. And so now we're gonna use the power law for logarithms again. So the two x minus one exponent can come down as a coefficient for the logarithm using the power law for logarithms. And so now you have the quantity two x minus one times natural log of four. So base four is still inside the natural logarithm. So you have the quantity two x minus one times natural log of four on the left side of the equation is equal to natural log of nine on the right side of the equation. And again, if you wanna get x by itself, you can divide by natural log of four because natural log of four is just a number. And then you have two x minus one by itself on the left side of the equation is equal to natural log of nine and then divide by natural log of four on the right side of the equation. So now let's try to get x by itself. You need to add one to both sides of the equation. So you have two x is equal to natural log of nine divide by natural log of four and then add one to the right side of the equation. And now divide both sides of the equation by two. So two x divided by two will give you x. And the right side of the equation, you'll have natural log of nine divided by two times natural log of four. The two's in the denominator because you're divided by two. And then you also have to divide the one by two. So that makes it plus one half. So again, this is the exact answer. Or if you use the scientific or graphic calculator, you can actually find out what is the approximate answer. So you have natural log of nine, close parentheses, divided by, now notice in the denominator, you have a two times natural log of four. Those need to be enclosed in parentheses on your graphing calculator. So it's parentheses, two times natural log of four, and then close parentheses on the natural log, and then close parentheses on the denominator and then add one half. And so the answer is approximately 1.2925, or if you round the three decimal places, it will be 1.293. Number three, this time you have base five raised to the x exponent on the left side of the equation, and on the right side of the equation, you have base four to the x plus one power. So again, notice that both sides of the equation cannot be written using a common base. On one side, you have base five, and on the other side, you have base four. So again, we're gonna use the algebraic technique. So we're gonna use natural log, on both sides of the equation. So natural log of the left side of the equation, so natural log of base five to the x exponent is equal to natural log of the right side of the equation, which is natural log of base four to the x plus one power. 
And so now you can use the power law for logarithms. So the x that's on the base 5 that's inside the natural logarithm can be written as a coefficient. So the x can be brought down to be a coefficient. So the x times natural log of 5 on the left side of the equation. And on the right side of the equation, you can take the x plus 1 and make it a coefficient for the natural log of 4. And so you have x plus 1 in parentheses times natural log of 4 on the right side of the equation. So now notice you have x on both sides of the equation. You need to get all the x terms on the same side of the equation. So let's remove all the parentheses by distributing the natural log of 4 on the right side of the equation. So natural log of 4 times x, you have x times natural log of 4. And natural log of 4 times 1 just is natural log of 4. So you have x times natural log of 5 on the left side of the equation. You have x times natural log of 4 on the right side of the equation. And the natural log of 4 does not involve x. So let's subtract x natural log of 4 to the left side of the equation. So you have x times natural log of 5. Subtract x times natural log of 4 is equal to natural log of 4. And so we have all the x terms on one side of the equation because now we can factor out the x that we're trying to solve for. So factor out the x from both terms on the left side of the equation. You'll have x times natural log of 5 will be left over from the first term minus natural log of 4 will be left over from the second term. And it equals natural log of 4 on the right side of the equation. So now, how do you get x by itself? You divide by the number, natural log of 5, subtract natural log of 4 on both sides of the equation, and then you have x by itself. So x is equal to natural log of 4 divided by natural log of 5, and then subtract natural log of 4 in the denominator. And so again, this is the exact solution for the exponential equation, but if you want to find out what the approximate solution is, you can use a graphing calculator or scientific calculator to find out that the solution can be natural log of 4, close parenthesis on the numerator, divided by, now there's two terms in the denominator, so make sure those are enclosed with parentheses. So parentheses, natural log of 5, close parenthesis on the natural log, and then subtract natural log of 4, close parenthesis on the natural log again, and then close parentheses on the denominator. And this is approximately 6.2126, or if you round the three decimal places, it'd be 6.213. So let's try a few more. Number four, this time you have three times base 1.025 raised to the t exponent is equal to 100. So this time we have to isolate the exponential expression first. Notice that the three is not being raised to an exponent. So three is being multiplied to the base and the base is being raised to the t. So we wanna get the base 1.025 to the t exponent by itself. That's the exponential expression. So divide both sides by three first. So you'll have the division by 3, you'll have 1.025 to the t on the left side of the equation, and on the right side of the equation you'll have 100 divided by 3. Now do not approximate 100 divided by 3. We don't want to round our answer until the very end, because otherwise we'll have round off error. So on the left side of the equation you have 1.025 raised to the t exponent is equal to 100 divided by 3 on the right side of the equation. And now notice, there's no way you can rewrite this to be 1.025 base, and on the other side to also have a common base. So we're going to use the algebraic technique again. So we'll take natural log on both sides of the equation. Natural log of base 1.025 to the t exponent is equal to natural log of the right side of the equation. So natural log of 100 divided by 3. And so now we can use the power law for logarithms to take the exponent t on the base 1.025 and rewrite t as a coefficient of the logarithm. So it's t times natural log of 1.025 is equal to the right side of the equation, natural log of 100 divided by 3. And now how do you get t by itself? You divide by the number that's being multiplied by t, so divide both sides of the equation by natural log of 1.025. And so t is equal to natural log of 100 divided by 3 on the right side of the equation, and then also divide by natural log of 1.025. And so this is the exact answer for the solution to the equation. Or the approximate solution would be natural log of 100 divided by 3. So now close the parentheses on the 100 divided by 3, because that's the argument of the numerator logarithm, and then divide by natural log of the base, which was 1.025. And then that's approximately 142.0083, or rounded to three decimal places, it'd be 142.008. Number five, this time we have base e on one side of the equation that's being raised to the three subtract five x exponent. And on the other side of the equation, you have 16. So this time you have base e on one side of the equation and base 16 on the other side of the equation. There is no common base between base e and base 16. So we're going to, again, we're going to use the algebraic technique. So isolate the exponential expression. It already is on the left side of the equation by itself. So we can take natural log on both sides of the equation. So take natural log of the left side of the equation, natural log of base e to the exponent 3 subtract 5x is equal to natural log of the right side of the equation, 16. And now you can use the power law for logarithms to bring the exponent and make it a coefficient for that natural log on the left side of the equation. So you have parentheses, 3 subtract 5x times natural log of e is still part of the argument of the logarithm. So natural log of e is equal to natural log of 16 on the right side of the equation. And so 3 subtract 5x, Natural log of e, we've talked about before, natural log of e is 1 because it's 
logarithm base e of e. e to what exponent gives you itself back e? Well, the exponent must be 1. So 3 subtract 5x times 1 is just 3 minus 5x, and it equals natural log of 16 on the right side of the equation. So now try to get x by itself on one side of the equation. Subtract 3 on both sides of the equation. You'll have negative 5x is equal to natural log of 16, and then subtract 3, and then divide both sides of the equation by negative 5 to get x by itself. And that is natural log of 16, subtract 3, and then divide that entire expression by negative 5. This is the exact solution to the equation that was base e to the 3 minus 5x, which is equal to 16. It's the only value that will make the equation true. And this is approximately equal to, notice you have two terms in the numerator, so you have to enclose those in parentheses. So parentheses, natural log of 16, close parentheses on the natural log, subtract 3, close parentheses on the numerator, and then divide by negative 5. And this is approximately 0 0.0455. And then around the three decimal places, it would be 0 0.046 as an approximate solution to the equation. So a couple more. Number 6, you have the expression on the left side of the equation, 8 plus base e to the exponent 1 plus 2x. And the right side of the equation is 20. So these two expressions are equal to one another, and you want to try to find out what is the x value that will make this equation true. So again, start off by isolating the exponential expression on one side of the equation. So this 8 is not part of the exponential expression. It can be subtracted to the right side of the equation. So you have base e to the exponent 1 plus 2x on the left side of the equation is now equal to 20 subtract 8, which will give you 12. And so now it looks just like the last problem we just completed. You have base e to an exponent 1 plus 2x, and the right side of the equation is 12. There is no way you can rewrite this from base e and base 12 to be a common base. So you have to use the algebraic technique. So take natural log on both sides of the equation, natural log of the left side of the equation, natural log of base e raised to the exponent 1 plus 2x is equal to natural log of the right side of the equation, which was 12. And now the exponent can be brought down to the coefficient of the natural logarithm because you have an exponential expression as part of the argument of the logarithm. So you'll have 1 plus 2x in parentheses times natural log of the base e is equal to natural log of 12 on the right side of the equation. And so natural log of e, again, is just 1. It's base e to the first power that will give you itself e back. So you have 1 plus 2x times 1, which will just be 1 plus 2x. And on the right side of the equation, you have natural log of 12. And so now try to get x by itself. Subtract 1 on both sides of the equation. You have 2x is equal to natural log of 12, and then subtract 1. And now divide both sides of the equation by 2 to isolate the x. So you have x on the left side of the equation is equal to natural log of 12, subtract 1, that's the numerator, and then divide the entire expression by 2. This is the exact solution that will make this equation 8 plus base e to the 1 plus 2x power is equal to 20. That will make the equation true if x is this value. Natural log of 12, subtract 1, all divided by 2. Which again is approximately equal to, if you enclose the numerator in parentheses, natural log of 12 minus 1, and then that's the numerator, so enclose that in parentheses, and then divide the entire expression by 2, you'll have approximately 0 0.7425. Or again, if you round the three decimal places, it'd be 0 0.743. All right, number seven. You have 10 divided by the expression one plus e to the negative x exponent, that's in the denominator underneath the 10, is equal to five. So let's try to get rid of the denominator first thing. You wanna isolate the exponential expression, but it's in the denominator, so multiply both sides of the equation by the least common denominator, or LCD, which is one plus e to the negative x exponent. So if you do that, you'll have 10 on the left side of the equation because the denominator multiplied by the LCD would just cancel out or simplify to one, but the right side of the equation becomes five times the LCD, where five times one plus e to the negative x in parentheses. So if you wanna isolate the exponential expression, you need to divide both sides by five. So divide both sides by five to cancel out the five or simplify to one and you'll have 1 plus e to the negative x left over is equal to 10 divided by 5, which just simplifies to 2. So 1 plus e to the negative x is equal to 2. Isolate the exponential expression first, so subtract 1 on both sides of the equation. You have e to the negative x is equal to 2 subtract 1, it, which is just 1. And now you can take the natural log on both sides of the equation using the algebraic technique because base e and 1 are not common bases. So you can take natural log on the left side of the equation. You have natural log of e to the negative x as the argument is equal to natural log of 1. Well, natural log of 1 is 0. It's base e to what exponent gives you 1. Well, the exponent on base e must be 0 to give you 1. So the right side of the equation is 0. And then you can use the power law to bring the negative x to the coefficient of the natural logarithm. So negative x coefficient times natural log of e again. Natural log of e is just 1. So you have negative x is equal to 0. And if you divide both sides of the equation by negative 1, you find out that x is equal to 0. So in other words, x must be 0 for this original equation to be true. So this finishes our video on solving exponential equations. We've talked about how to use like bases to solve exponential equations and also to use logarithms to solve exponential equations. If you have any questions about any examples in this video, please let me know. 
Or if you have any questions while you work on the homework for this section, please let me know that as well. And I'll see you at the next video when we talk about solving logarithmic equations.